technical communication and i am uma joshi today we are going to study dynamics of communication in which we will be discussing about certain basics of communication so today we will be discussing three important points about the basics of communication firstly let us see what is the need of communication in our lives and what is the importance of learning communication skills so in this topic we will be learning the need of communication in our daily lives and importance of studying communication skills now as we all know that right from the morning till the night we keep on communicating we communicate because there is some need or a purpose so when you get up in the morning you may ask your mother or your father for certain things that you may need for example you may ask for tea or breakfast or maybe money then you go to your college and you communicate with your friends your teachers or any of the person that you meet because either you expect some response in terms of a reply or an action that means that whatever we communicate has some purpose or the other now if our purpose is not served that means that our communication is not effective from this we can understand that communication is very important in our daily lives now suppose you are working in an organization or take an example of any person around you who is in the professional world so as you all know that in the professional world the employees and the employers everyone who is there in the organization need to communicate because they have to coordinate a lot so that they can carry out all the activities of the organization for example you have to report to your bosses or take instructions from your bosses you have to listen to the requirement of your clients or you will have to coordinate with your colleagues about maybe some project or some work on how you are going to carry out that work so that means that even in organizations everything revolves around communication now imagine if there is no communication in the professional world then what will happen suppose you are asked that neither can you talk to anyone nor can you send an email or no kind of communication can happen in the organization then any activity will not be carried out successfully and eventually everything will come to a standstill and ultimately the organization will fail to exist in absence of communication so that is the importance of communication in our daily lives as well as our professional lives now why should we learn communication now we all have heard about the words misunderstandings misinterpretation and misconceptions why, why does these things exist in, in the world, world? Because, because these misconceptions are already there there, there are misunderstandings and miscommunications happening in people, between people. people so why, why does this happen because there are certain barriers to communication there are certain things that that influences the communication and it doesn't allow it to become effective like like that, like, like i said before if the purpose of your communication is not so that means that if you don't get a desired reply or a desired response in terms of action that means that your communication was not effective so there is a scope of improvement in your communication now coming, coming to the professional life there we need to learn communication skills because there are certain techniques that we have to use when we communicate in professional life that means that there is the, the communication of the professional life is different from the communication that we do in our daily lives so that is why the communication is very important in our daily lives and professional lives 
and we need to learn certain skills so that we are able to communicate exactly what we wanted to communicate now let us see how can we define communication so whenever the word communication comes to our mind we always think of giving away information but that is not the case communication is actually an exchange it is a two way process it is an exchange of information and knowledge so communication can be defined as an exchange of information ideas thoughts knowledge emotions between a sender and a receiver through a channel using an accepted code of symbols so to explain this the sender and the receiver they are the people between whom the communication happens so sender is the person who wants to say something or who wants to convey the information to the other person and that other person who is receiving the information we will call that person as the receiver now here the sender and the receiver will keep on changing the roles because like i said communication is always a two way process now coming to the channel what is the meaning of the channel channel is a medium through which a communication travels to the receiver suppose we are talking to a person face to face then we are using air as the medium or we are talking on the phone then we are using the service provider's network as the medium so that is the channel but for the communication to happen a channel or a medium is required and lastly what is the meaning of accepted code of symbols so this accepted code of symbols is nothing but certain things which are accepted by both the parties that is sender and the receiver which both of them can understand so that is language here we can use language as the tool to communicate so we use a language which the sender and the receiver both of them understands so that is why it is called accepted code of symbols so this is the definition of communication so now that we know the definition of the communication from that we can understand how the process of communication happens now the process of communication has certain aspects or the certain steps like ideation sending channel receiving decoding encoding and response so let us see how all these steps happen in the communication process now because communication happens in our daily lives we are not able to understand that it is a process because it happens in in very few seconds but every step is very important in the communication process so step number 1 is ideation now ideation means that the sender has some idea or a thought or some information that he or she wants to convey it to the receiver or wants to share it with the receiver now this ideation happens in fractions of second if your communication is very simple and small but if your communication is very complex and long then the process of ideation is also very long for example if you want to ask for a notebook from your friend the ideation step is very small but if you want to make a business proposal then the ideation is very long now ideation is a very very important step of communication because in absence of ideation or in other words we can say in absence of a thought or knowledge communication cannot exist so that means that the clarity of thought will make the communication more effective now once this ideation has happened the sender will have to convert this idea or thought into a message which the receiver can understand so this conversion of idea into message is called encoding and that is the step number 2 of our communication process now once this idea is converted into a message 
that is it is put into the words which a receiver can understand now this message has to now go to the receiver it will go to the receiver through a channel or a medium so that is called sending the message through the channel and like i said we use air or a network or any kind of media for communicating as a which we will call as a channel now once the message goes through the channel the receiver either either listens to the message or reads the message if it is in a written form so that is called receiving of the message now when the message is received now that is in the words that the sender has put but the receiver will process it in his or her own mind to understand it so this understanding of message is called decoding the message that means now the receiver will convert this information or the knowledge that he or she has received from the sender into an idea that he or she may understand so this conversion of message back to the idea is called decoding after this decoding process happens does the communication process stop no that doesn't end the communication process the communication process is incomplete because we require a response from the receiver now response can be in terms of a reply or it can be in terms of an action for example if you told your friend that it is very hot today then you expect some answer from your friend but if you ask a person to give you something then the action of giving is a response so response can be in terms of either a reply or an action but these were very small examples of our daily lives let me give you an example of professional life suppose you want to collaborate with a company and you have gone with a proposal with that company you have done the ideation process encoding you have made a very good report on it you have presented in front of the people and then at the end they will be taking the decision whether to sign any kind of collaboration or agreement with you so that action is also a response or they may even ask for some more clarifications from you so that is also a response now this means that from the response we can understand whether our communication was effective or not and that is why response is also called feedback of communication it is also compared with the barometer because just like the barometer measures the pressure the feedback or the response measures the communication so response plays a very very important in part in communication process so today we saw that what is the need and importance of communication in our daily lives and professional lives we defined communication and we also learned about communication process now after learning this communication process we will be able to understand the nuances of communication and then we will be able to sharpen our communication skills because it gives us more clarity